I like it when two early two thousand icons that got married, be and then had uh, or were together and got separated because of the paparazzi get back together and say "fuck you" to society by getting married twenty years later. That's awesome. You know what we should do, Chris? A whole episode on Benifer. <laughs> It's a show by Chris and Neil with all great movies. They are the real deal. We watch them all so you don't have to. It's movies that don't suck and some that do. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of all ages, it's another wonderful, spootendous episode of Movies That Don't Suck and Some Do. My name is Neil. And I'm Chris. And today we are going into the Benifer universe. Yes, because finally. Finally. for some reason, <laughs> finally, finally, I don't know why we've never been with Benifer, <laughs> hanging out with the Benifer, Ben Affleck. Uh, Going to be honest, Ben Affleck is actually one of my favorite actors. I don't know why. Um, he's very, very him. attractive. <laughs> is it because I don't think he's attractive? You know what it is? It's like I see Ben Affleck, and I'm like, that's a dude I could have a couple beers with, hang out with, and have a good conversation with, and not super cheese over him. You know, maybe what I'm that's saying? it. Maybe that is it. That could be it. I, I think that's it. And and plus, he's like the size of what Batman should have been. Um, oh, okay. so maybe yeah, you're right. You're right. He's he is too. very Batman looking. I would say. But I mean, look at these two. Look at these two. Like, if you're if you're on the podcast, of course you can't hear, you can't see. But I mean, this is them, 2002, Benifer. So t- today we are going to be. It just so happens this past Friday, both released a movie out. One at the movie theater, and one on Netflix. First, the Netflix movie, The Mother, starring one and only. Is it Jennifer Affleck or is it just it's still? She's still about Jennifer Lopez or J Lo. If you want to do. Do uh, that. What do you want to do? Let's see. All right, and it, here she is, the one, the only, J-Lo. Now, once the thumb liquefies the eye, it is deftly and immediately replaced by the forefinger. Deep thrust, hooking around, and securing the ocular nerve. And then removing it with such force as to bring with it, by suction, a vital portion of the visual cortex. The part of the brain, as I'm sure you may know, that stores visual memory. Now, the extraordinary element of this move, the the genius of it, the, the absolute poetry of it, is that aside from the obvious wound, one's opponent is left with no memory of anything he has ever seen. Family, friends, nothing. Hence, kai toi mai. The rip that takes the past. So that's from Geely. So if you never seen me like me. <laughs> I, I only seen Geely once. I think I saw it back when it came out. Mm-hmm. That's one of the coolest scenes <laughs> I, 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 like ever of Jennifer Lopez. Um, I, I think I can tell you when we t- we'll talk about her more later because mm-hmm. I'll, I'll we'll deep dive a little bit and I'll tell you exactly what my favorite movie from Jennifer Lopez mm-hmm. is over. Which, which probably was so. uh, Lucy uh, Lucy Pazes is also in this movie who plays her um, daughter in the movie, but uh, there's nothing for her because she's, Lucy so Pez, young. she's like what 12 years old? Yeah, she's like 12 years old, and everything else was um, 100% in Spanish. Yeah. So I, I did pass that. But um, the next one in this guy who plays Cruz, a uh, good actor. I've seen him in many yeah, things he's before. Awesome. Um, Omari Hardwick. There is no secret. Just me. I don't follow. Well, I'm a black man from the hood. Most of the guys I came up with are either dead or in jail. I live in the penthouse of my building, above the lawyers and doctors trying to get into my club. See, people take you at face value, Simon. Me? Well, I have to transform to meet everyone's expectations constantly. Truth isn't one thing because I'm not one thing. You understand? I take all my experiences and use them to cater all different kinds of people under one roof. Whether it's the black professional athlete ordering his next bottle of Ciroc or whether it's the Wall Street motherfucker getting blackout drunk on the company's dime, I understand him. I get him. And because I get him, I get him. And because I get him, 
I get rich. That's from Power. That's from Power. A really good show. It was a really great show. Um, look at Facebook. Anyway, um, <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say, buddy. Anyway, um, now, uh, also on this show, on this movie, uh, a guy, you know, I was trying to look for the part, the scene, one of the scenes from, of course, the wonderful uh, Handmaid's Tale. Yeah, yeah, Max sure. Actor. He talks so quietly. I didn't. I didn't want to work you. <laughs> well, you you would like, had to you you would had to adjust some sounds on yeah, that clip. I just I, I went through hobbies. like an hour trying yeah. to find clips from. But also in this movie, playing Adrian Joseph Fiends, everybody. Joseph Fiends, uh, brother of Refines, by the way. I mentioned. Ooh, you know who's Fiends? You are Chris. You're oh, Fiends. Oh, that's nice, dude. Oh, Thomas, if I could write the beauty of her eyes, I was born to look in them and know myself. Uh, and her lips? Her lips? The early morning rose would wither on the branch if it could feel envy. And her voice, like lark's song? Deeper, softer. None of your twittering larks. I would banish nightingales from her garden before they interrupt her song. Ah, oh, she sings too? Constantly. Without doubt. And plays the lute. She has a natural ear. And her bosom. Did I mention her bosom? What of her bosom? Oh, Thomas. Pair of pippins as round and rare as golden apples. What a horn dog! <laughs> I know, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it reminds me of you back when I met you, man. Come Gosh, on, dude, no, come on. Dude. Yeah, you're like, you're like, oh, Aunt Jackie from Roseanne's hot <laughs> ladybird. No, I'm just kidding. That's not what he said. Um, and also in this movie, um, just for a second, one of the just for a second. What in this movie? You're about to see E. Falcon, right? Yeah, but I mean, it's Eddie Falkel, though. I mean, like, she's a legend, right? Yeah. He's, he's she's a legend. Okay. But, um, you know, so that's why you have to put her in here for her voice. So, Eddie Falco. I think we should be friends. I like to think of friendship as a foundation for dating. I used to work in narcotics. Like, I'm, I'm literally a narc. I don't know that I'm your type. Why don't you let me worry about that? We don't have anything in common. Sure we do. There's no chemistry. You sure about that? I think that's if you were talking to Edie Falco, you'd be the person trying to convince her to be with you like that. Yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and that's from Tommy, a show that... Uh, now, guys, if you haven't noticed so far, the clips that we are playing are literally from the worst movies that these people <laughs> have ever been in. I, I, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. Um, I just realized too in the next movie, I'm really upset. But anyway, that is from the movie The Mother. Yeah, we'll talk about um, that in a little bit. We'll talk about that in a bit of a bit. The second movie is done, written, produced, directed, uh, made by the entire Robert Rodriguez family. Yeah. Um, we'll talk about that. In a little yeah, bit I have too. a little bit to say about it too. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's called Hypnotic. Yeah. Featuring the one, the only. The man with the plan, the guy who made Batman bat cool again, Mister. I mean, he hasn't been cool since Michael Keaton. Let's be honest. That's cool. You're right. Okay. Yeah. This yeah. Is... I mean, Michael Keaton was the coolest Batman, and then since then it was just like a bunch of it. Like, I don't. I don't want to say everybody played him badly. I mean, it just went really down slope, though. I mean, if Val Kimmer was probably the best out of them. Then you went, got George Clooney, and then you got Christian Bale. It went, and like, then we just lost all our viewers. Just then. <laughs> yeah, and, and then, uh, and then after that, you had, um, I mean, Ben Affleck brought it back up, and Robert Pattinson was the one that you know gave it some more breath. But anyway, we'll we'll talk about that on another episode. Let's talk about the wonderful, the beautiful, the man with the plan. The one that wanted to take that one. Oh my to God, we want Alanis Morissette. Ben Affleck. What? What did you say? I said don't talk to me about greed. No, not about that. About you said a guy takes a ship for you. I never said anything about a ship. How'd you know there was a ship? Said it. You said the real Nick died saving you. No, I didn't. I said he died. I never said how. Yes, you did. No, I never said how. I said he died. You said he was stabbed. I said he died. I never said how. You said he was stabbed, that he took a ship, a knife, a shank, whatever. 
Ash? How'd she know there was a ship? Ash? How'd she know? So, yeah, that's from... Uh, What's Reindeer in Games. the box? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's wrong a different movie. movie. Wrong movie. Yeah, this is Reindeer Games from 2000. Like, I guess... Reindeer Games. Seriously, the worst movie Ben Affleck ever did. Um, which is so weird because if you look at the people that's in that movie... Yeah, I think Gary Sinise... It's one of those movies like... um. Uh, what's that one that's really bad that has everybody good at it? Burn After Reading. Uh, like well, I that like Burn one. After Reading. Yeah, n- nobody else does, dude. Oh, well, well. Sorry. It has like a 27% on Ramen Tomatoes. No, I know it's, I know it's <laughs> higher than that, but I think, I think you're thinking of a different movie, like The Count or something. Uh, whatever, moving on. Babylon? About, Let's go Babylon. I, I like that's, Babylon, that's too. That's new. I, like you do, I, I haven't seen it yet because it's so long and yeah. I haven't had the chance to sit down. But, like, I, again, never heard a good thing about it. You know, yeah, but anyway, okay. also in this movie, <laughs> also in this movie, the wonderful Alice Barga. That's what I said. Oh, you, you hear you cut, you cut out. <laughs> oh, did I really? I'm yeah. sorry. Alice Barga, everybody. Let's see. Pancreas and kidneys from the diabetes. One went bad outside warranty. Had to go black market on a replacement. Fever, stomach and lungs, thanks to the Q-habit. Stone? Flex or dura joints. Billion step warranty. Stone? Ask me about my lips. What brand are your lips? Yeah, about the lips. Yeah, um, yeah, from Repo Man. Yeah, did you ever see that movie? I didn't see Repo Man. I heard it's good though. Is it good? Or is it terrible? It, man, I wanted it to be better. <laughs> yeah, I think it's everyone... one of those movies that you just wish you just. But um, also in this movie, the one. Okay, so we got that. We got that. Oh, this one was a hard one to find because I knew he was in this show. I tried so hard to find it. Oh, yeah. Everything was Mayans. Mayans MC because he yeah. he plays the head Mayan in uh-huh. Mayan MC, uh, which is the sequel to uh, Sons of Anarchy. If you don't know people, uh, which is in its final season. Uh, but here he is in uh, East. Uh, what is it called? East uh, Los. East, uh, I think East Los Angeles. I think it's all it is. Yeah, at least Los High. Yeah. East Los High. And it is J.D. Pardo. Camila, listen to me. Get the hell out of here. It smells bad enough for you without your bullshit. Don't you get it? I stayed because I can't live without you. Didn't you ever think about how I'd feel? I made a mistake. But I'm going to spend the rest of my life trying to make it up to you. Well, if we're going to be together, you can't be running off on me. Camila, I'm done running. Yeah, that's from, like you said, you saw Sand. You saw Sand. By the way, I thought that maybe that you were thinking of, by the way, it's called The Counselor. Counselor, yes. yeah. It has like yes. Michael Fassbender, Phil Cruz, Cameron Diaz, Harvey Redim, Brad Pitt, Rosie Perez. All these people that you think should be they great. They should have been a good movie. I hate movies when you like look at the cast and you're like, oh, good. Should have been by really, also, yeah. in this movie, Pell playing Del Rain. Oh, one of my favorite characters in one of the worst movies ever. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, William Fick. Fickner. That's what I said, William Fickner. Scor- Are you cutting out? Uh, you're cutting out. William Fickner. Scorcher today. Scorcher today, huh? <laughs> Help me. Hmm. Christ and a cracker. My apologies. <sighs> What's that supposed to mean? It's a symbol of our pact with Lord Satan. Pact, huh? Ooh. Funny, he's never mentioned you. Whoa, those are <laughs> fucked. Here, have some water. Oh. <sighs> Amateurs. I'm gonna die, ain't I? Milton's work, I take it. Just, yeah. You son of a bitch shot me. Wait, how did you? Who are you? I'm the accountant. So drive angry, 
<laughs> drive angry. Like literally the movie is, is crap, but I love that character in it. Uh, you know, there's another guy I wanted to do a clip for, and I totally forgot about it because it was so late when I started working on him. Was it Gil Garcia Bernal? Cause that's who I would have picked. No, no, it'd have been <laughs> Jackie Earl Haley because oh, yeah, he plays the worst version of Freddy Cougar ever. <laughs> and I would have done one of the clips from Freddy Cougar. But that movie is called Hypnotic. It's the Robert Rodriguez movie of Ben Affleck. It's out at the movie theaters. Yeah. We'll be talking about those two movies here in just a second. Chris, first tell everybody where they can find us. You can find us online at don'tsuck.net. We're at w2mnet.com. Go to w2mnet.com, and we uh, that's a podcast that we're a part of. Very cool stuff. All kinds of stuff there about games, wrestling, movies. We're there. They're pretty great. Check them out. Uh, our friend Mark Matter, which is a network. Uh, we're also on Facebook at facebook.com. slash reasons podcast. We're on Twitter at TS Podcast. or Instagram at TS Podcast. You guys want to uh, become a patron? On go to patreon.com. slash reasons don't suck. Yeah, we have a ton of like uh, tiers you can choose there. Um, also, we're if you guys want merch with our you know our, our uh, logo and faces on it, go to bonfire.com, such movies don't suck and some they do. And uh, if you listening on Facebook, go like that page. You listen to uh, YouTube, go subscribe. And wherever you find podcasts, wherever you find contacts, you can find movies that don't suck and some they do. Neil, who are we talking about today? Small businesses, man. We love helping we small businesses out on our, our podcast. This is literally one of the things we love doing more than anything in the entire world. And today we are going to talk about one that I love right here in the city I live in called Boomtown Tees. Boomtown Tees. You want, you want to see a picture of the outside of this place? Look at this place, dude. It is literally the Tulsa place. If you want to get some cool Tulsa-themed T-shirts, this is the place is to go. Is it where you right now? Uh, no, this is actually a wrestling shirt from <laughs> from WrestleMania okay. I got. Uh, Boomtown Tees is locally owned by Michelle and Tony, who also own Boulevard Trash, which is the punk rock place mm-hmm. I need to take you to when you come down Please here. Do. If you guys don't know, Chris used to be a punk rock guitar player. So, um, kind of uh, so, but... <laughs> but they also they they uh, they also run they also run the Oddities and Curiosities Expo oh, shit, need... that runs across. Dude, I love that place. Yeah. It's one of my uh, – I, I go to that every year. Um, it's traveling nationwide now. They hand screen print uh, T-shirts um, uh, spotlighting Tulsa. Every month they feature a new T-shirt design for only $10. Now, I'm not lying to you. Seriously, right now the T-shirt for this this month is this one right here, and that's a $10 T. You nice. go in there, you pay 10 bucks, no matter what your size is. They have all kinds of cool designs like – you know, this one here uh, with the Tulsa flag. Uh, this is the inside of the store. Sorry. <laughs> I, I was going to show you another. There we go. The one in the middle I love the most. This one right here. Life the 918. <laughs> yeah. Because life is great in the 918. Because 918 is a zip code here. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you guys know this. You mean but the my area birthday, code, by the way. Your area code. Yeah, and the area code. <laughs> my birthday is literally September 18th. Nice. So, like, the 918 portion they do is freaking awesome. The Balloon Dome District t-shirt. I mean, they got plenty of good, cool shirts. Um, the living on Tulsa time and stuff like that. Now, they focus heavily on custom screen printing for array of small businesses around here in Tulsa and Oklahoma. They find it really extremely important to support uh, local and support local, uh, shop local and support local as much as you possibly can. If you are interested in getting a quote for a custom order, you can reach out to them and they would love to add you to their ever growing client list. Now, they are located at 114A South Eline. Avenue. Now, let me see that really quick. I think I actually have it so I can uh, pop it up for you guys for you right here. There we go. And it is one of the, my favorite, like I have several t-shirts of theirs that are in the other room. I just didn't wear it because I'm going to a concert right after. And I wanted to kind of look like I was got a ska band on, which (laughs) it's not, but you can get them, uh, their information at 
You can get them at BoomtownTeesTulsa.com or you can find them on Facebook on Facebook.com backslash BoomtownTees. The staff, the people, everyone that works there, amazing people. Uh, Jen, I know her. I've met her on several occasions because of my buddy Ray and Sandra. And, like, they're really cool. It's right next to the Max, the 80s theme uh, 80s theme arcade downtown Tulsa. It's worth it. And man, 10 bucks. What's 10 bucks for a t shirt? 10 bucks is what you pay for one drink at a bar. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You sure. So, I mean, you wear, wear a ton of times that you, you know, drink once, right? So. Right. right. <laughs> So definitely, guys, go to Boomtown Tees. Literally hit them up. If you're in Tulsa, go downtown, look for Boomtown uh, Boomtown Tees. Or, again, on their website, you can go find them. It is Boomtown Tees, T-E-E-S, Tulsa.com. All right. Man, are you ready to talk some movies today? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll, I, I'll talk to about San Diego later because I did go see No Fixes Final Show in San Diego. Out of control. But, um, oh, dude, yes, we got to talk about yeah. this for five seconds. Sorry, folks, I'm sorry. I know you probably want some movie reviews right now, but I got to hear about this. Chris went to no FX final show ever in San, in Diego. San Diego, California. Yeah, they're, 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 they're yeah. The guys are breaking up there on their final tour, and they're doing like every show is kind of like a festival that has seven bands. They got tons of food booths, they all kinds of shit up. It's called Punk and Drug Week because it's a beer festival, right? And then their last show. And so uh, it was me and my brother got there about two o'clock. We got you know, some free beer samples. We watched a few of the bands. And oh, quick, really, really, really quick. Let me jump in for half a second. If people don't know, Chris's brother is also his twin. Oh yeah. So yeah. they are twin guys that look like each other. Mm-hmm. Um, his, his brother looks um a more skinnier. Uh, what's the way I can say this? <laughs> um, yeah, we'll just say like he's had less meals. Yeah, yeah. there we go. <laughs> he hasn't eaten as well as I have, but uh, we uh. Went down there. And it was it was great because it's, it's San Diego, so it's sixty five degrees outside. It's perfect. Um, so we, we were watching a few bands. We give food. I buy the merch, and then fucking uh, Vandals come on. Vandals uh, who played the show was Your Thing, West Addiction, uh, Bomb Pops, Code Defendants, and then the Vandals, Descendants, and then finally No Effects. So me and Matt, we you got to see the Vandals too. I got to see the Vandals, Vandals, and I didn't know how many people love the Vandals. So people. Well, then it was me and my brother in the middle of the crowd for the Vandals, and it was getting fucking happy, dude. And we're like, okay, whatever, right? So we always saw the Vandals, and then after the Vandals came on, the Descendants came on. And the Descendants mean a lot of things to a lot of people, right? And that got fucking rowdy as shit. Like, like it was at the point that, you know. Yeah, you're gonna, you're probably gonna, even though, like, everybody that listens to these bands is, like, 40 years old. Yeah. Plus. Dude, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You yeah, got yeah, some jack you know? dude. They have monstrous, and there's always some jacked asshole there just fucking people up. And, um, uh, let me, this is a waterfront park, and it held 10,000 people. It sold out with 10,000 people. And when no effects, oh my God. When no effects came on, everyone surged forward. I was in the middle and I got fucking pushed out against the fence. And no effects started playing. Uh, there were people that were uh, when the search happened. People were threatening to fucking break backstage. There's a barricade that was about to fall over, and people were. It was fucking violent, dude. <laughs> and um, yeah, and it, it was it was fun though. It was fun, but but it was uh very dangerous at points. Uh, you know, medics were running everywhere. Oh, it was like old school concerts. Yeah, yeah. Right, medics, yeah. Were, medics were ever going everywhere. Uh, people were crowd surfing and fighting. The security guards getting thrown out the back. Um, and um, I, I uh, did my best, and people were just fucking falling down drunk too. Dude, you saw people just fucking vomiting or falling over. And it was it was fucking dangerous. But me and brother here for the whole show, and we uh, got out safely. But it was All right. it was out of control. Out of control. All right. So uh, people that are at home uh, listening to the podcast right now, not looking at the mm-hmm. blog, I'm literally sharing pictures that Chris took yeah. of uh, him at the no FX uh, state at the show. Just a couple of them. Uh, that's no FX. If I am correct. Yeah, that's fat Mike right the there. Yeah. Hair and, yeah. 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 Uh, I, I mean, I've seen them before, yeah. so I know what they look yeah, like, yeah. you know, it was years and years. We're talking like two marriages ago <laughs> was the last time <laughs> yeah, like I saw them. The no FX flag. I thought that was like, that's a good picture. I like that yeah. picture. Uh, uh, that one's cool. The crowd. 10, um, I got a question though, Chris, I got a question. Yeah. Has you and your brother ever taken a selfie before? Uh, very rarely, but, the, but yeah, I, yeah, 
Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> that is one of the worst <laughs> selfies I ever seen. Yeah, bro. I know. I love you. I'll teach you how to take some pictures. Uh, no, 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 just Matt, Matt didn't want to be on camera. He was just like not about it. So. Oh yeah, well you guys were probably stoned. I'm guessing you're. I, wa- I wasn't you're... Matt. I think Matt may have taken an edible beforehand, but I did not. But um... I mean, it, yeah. See, if I'm going to like a band's last show ever, mm-hmm. like um. Okay, this is better. Maybe you guys need to smile more, man. You guys just look like you're mean bugging every time you guys take a picture. No, just take a picture. You of guys the... not like each other. No, I thought you other. guys liked each we other. Love each other, we're best friends. But uh, but this well, is well, this is their final show in San Diego. They have like another. I know, yeah. but this picture here. Let me just share this. Okay, I'm sorry for the people on the podcast. I'm sure this ain't cool yeah. that I'm talking about pictures you can't see. But uh, you guys are just mean bugging <laughs> in every photo. That's it. Like, look at this. Okay, you guys like you're mean. That bugging, one right there. That that, bugging, that, that one right there. Like, that one right there. The one that you see both of us. That's it. Coco yeah. Curry. Coco Curry is the place me and my wife ate at in Tokyo. Every day we were oh, there. Wow. Yeah, and they had one in oh, San Diego, wow. so w- I had to take my brother there, and it's great. But you know what? I All think right. I think people are tired of hearing about me. You know what? Everybody, if you want to go back and listen, rewind that, you can. I can see there's other people jumping in now. Uh, he was talking about the No FX concert, <sighs> oh, but man. you know what, Chris? It's that time. It's All right, that let's, time. Let's... We're doing a movie podcast. Believe me, me and Chris could sit here and tell stories to each other. We could. For hours. But we, that's not what we do the podcast. We do the podcast because no. we we're movies. doing a movie podcast. Yeah. And today we are reviewing the movie. One of the movies that we're reviewing is Mother. Chris. The, the Mother is directed by Nikki Caro. She directed things like uh, The Zookeeper's Wife, McFarlane, USA, uh, A Henley Village, North Country, and. Uh, and it's also written by Misha Green. She's written things such as Love. She was a writer for Love Car Country uh, and Helix. And uh, also Andrea Burloff, who wrote things like She's a Writer for Straight Out Compton. And it was also written by Peter Craig, who does, like, he did, like, The Town. He did Batman, Top Gun Maverick, Bad Boys for Life. And this stars the ever watchable Jennifer Lopez as the mother. Now, once the thumb liquefies the eye, it is deftly and immediately replaced by the forefinger. Also, Lucy Pays as plays Zoe, the, the, the child in the movie. Omari Hardwick plays Cruz. There is no secret. Um, Joseph Fine plays Adrian. Thomas, if I could write the beauty of her eyes, I was born to look in them and know myself. Also, and Edie Falco shows up for a minute. I think we should be friends. <laughs> and also, this also stars Gail Garcia Bernal, who I love. Uh, Jesse Garcia is Tarantula, Paul Rau- Rousey is Johns, and uh, Vion Snet Jones is, is Sonia. Why don't you go ahead and read the storyline for the mother? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm sure I can do this. Okay. I, I don't know. I, let, okay. me, let me practice okay. it a few right. times. Me, me, me. All right. All right. While fleeing from dangerous assailants, an assassin comes out of hiding to protect her daughter. She left earlier in life. That sounds right. This is a very formulaic movie. Um. All right. This is what I'm going to say about this movie. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Should I just jump into it? Should I just go for it? I have bad things to say about it. And one of the things I want to bring up right away is that the cinematography, they had this weird thing to where it was, everything was blurred around the edges. Like, I don't know if yes. you missed. I thought, well, there's yes. something, I thought there was something with my TV. No, it's just the way it's shot. <laughs> it's so fucking weird. It was so weird how it was just like fuzzy everywhere and, 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 on the side of the screen. And it's right? a stylistic choice, but I think a poor one. <laughs> like this is yeah. And I, I mean, I get, I get that you're you're trying to do something. You're trying to do something stylistic, but you know, um, literally. Okay, let, let me just okay. Yeah, burp. Well, yeah. Um, <sighs> It fucks with the kineticism in the movie, that, that type of so it just fucks with how punchy I feel like this should be, but it's not. It's not as punchy, okay. yeah. Jennifer Lopez is she's good at singing. I'm not gonna deny her her pop songs that she's made millions and millions and millions of. She mm-hmm. seems like she's uh somewhat of a good person. Yeah, yeah. You know, um what I can gather take from <laughs> what what I see here and there. Um all right, she should not be in a movie playing a person that has no emotion. Oh yeah, yeah she's okay. 
Because in this movie, her lack of emotion did not seem like lack of emotion. It seemed like lack of acting skills. You're right. Because uh, she's a great actress. I mean, Selena fucking... Oh, uh, Selena was... Uh, fucking not, even, not just Selena. We can go, we can go closer. Yeah. We can do Hustlers. Yeah, we, hustlers yeah I was about to say Hustlers. Movie. Yeah, she's great in that. Yeah, like uh, one of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, like one of my not all time like top ten, mm. but it, in my top hundred at least is uh, her and Vincent, uh, Vince Vaughn in uh, The Cell. The Cell, yeah. The Cell's good in Oh, I love The Cell. It's one of my most... And she was great in that movie. She has acting. She can do acting. In this movie, I did not feel it. Yeah, and I don't want to say this is, like, god-awful, but it's not good, man. Like, like uh, I saw this... I watched this downstairs in my basement with the sound system on to make it as... Yeah, bombast the theater, as possible. Like, Chris has a full theater in his fucking basement, <laughs> yeah. guys. I yeah. mean, I'm not joking. Mm-hmm. It's it's got the he's got the theater carpet. He's got the cop popcorn. <laughs> he's got the you know he's got a big screen curtains. It can black projector, out. It's, yeah, it's, it's, projector, yeah. yeah. It, it's a theater. Yeah. It's literally an in home theater that he built himself. Mm-hmm. And literally, if he's saying that it did not look good or sound good, man. Yeah, it's just it's oh. like I I so one of the things I actually I, I glom on the characters when I watch movies like this. So I loved Cruz's character. Honestly, I thought Cruz was great, but mm-hmm. but everything else about the Joseph Fiennes plays like 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 I was saying these uh, the the thing that bothered me most about these these two villains right is that what the fuck is their motivation? Why are they doing this? They they just spend millions of dollars on the on the on trying to get the mother. <laughs> and for what you know it's not it's just, i mean they kind of they kind of explained it as like a revenge plot but 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 no like they're saying she lost in tons of money but they're spending millions of dollars going after her at yeah. a point yeah cut your losses right after what oh 15 years i guess i don't know man it just didn't make sense to me like after that like to me it was just like man like what do we do? Like, well, why would you go about doing this? Like, like it, it, the motivation was questionable to me. Now there are some action-packed moments in this for sure. There's a good car chase, I think. Uh, there's a right. There's a there's some really action, but but honestly, this is something you don't watch intently. You you you're cleaning the house. You're walking around the house where you're watching this. Like to me, it's it's just not very. It's just not very good, man. You know what the thing is, though, man? I'm going to tell you this right now. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is on Netflix, right? Yeah. So it's fucking... If you this have Netflix. is the number one most streamed movie of 2023. Man. <sighs> I, I hate to say that to you, but it's an actual fact. It's in my news segment somewhere. <laughs> I just grabbed it just to... But I, 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 now I don't have to talk about it later. Yeah. But, all right. People tried this movie yeah and i got it the thing is j-lo if you ever listen to me ever or my podcast ever let me just make it to you straight this was not your character no man and i think part of it has to do with so this reminded me just a little bit of bird box like you get this premise that People, mm-hmm. people, or mothers, I especially, are gonna glom onto me like, yes, I would do anything to protect my child or whatever. And maybe that's just the idea of it they like. But to me, this isn't, this isn't, this isn't very good, man. It it bothered me. It bothered me this movie. And uh, I I came upstairs after I was done. And we was like, how was it? She had no interest. And I was like, it's like not very good, not very good. It's it's not. I I, I stopped sort of saying it's boring. But I were, there were some parts I was bored tears at, for sure, you know? And it, it, it's not that it, yeah, again, it's not that it was boring. It was just like there's. Did you care about anyone in this movie? The only, the not first, one person. The only person that, I really cared about was Cruz, because I liked him. <laughs> you know, that's the only person I really liked in this movie. I thought there was no chemistry between the mother and Zoe. I didn't think that, I didn't think that was believable. And uh, guys, when it comes to actors being bad actors, um, I don't think that that's necessarily the fault of the actors. I think it's the fault of the director. If they can't get the best performance out of the actor they have, you know? Yeah. Like there was things that there was going on, um, that it was just like, I don't, there were so many things that in this movie that I was like, just like, 
okay, I know I'm supposed to care here. I know I'm supposed to think this is a good moment, but I didn't. Like, um, one, when the daughter comes back or whatever, so when mom and daughter get back together. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I know J- J-Lo is trying to play like she didn't give a fuck. It really seemed but like- that's not what it seemed like. It just seemed like she didn't know how to act. She didn't know how to act cold to somebody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And I think uh, this was just J- – Jennifer Lopez, this was not your role, all right? <laughs> this was not your role. No. Um, I, I can show you what your role is. Your role is something like this, and it's awesome. It's fine. <laughs> as a, as ben, ben Affleck's wife, <laughs> that's ben Affleck's, no, no, I'm not saying that. Yeah. Don't don't put okay, that in my fine, mouth. Fine, don't fine. put that in my mouth. That's fine. I don't think someone's just somebody's wife. Yeah. I don't. You know me. I'm I'm one of those guys. Who do not believe that. But maybe she was better in this role. <laughs> oh no. Um, no, no, but but Jeff Lopez, your, your favorite movie. Oh yeah, Julie. It, Life was in But anyway, yeah. um, yeah, it was just. It's not very good, man. Look, everybody got lost in this movie. Yeah, everyone did. Everyone got lost. Uh, everyone got lost. Like I don't know if it wasn't direction. Like people, there were spots. There were spots where I was like, okay, that makes sense. That yeah. that was cool. That was kind of cool. There were spots. There, there was one time yeah, I but, actually said "oh fuck" out loud, but that was the only time I said it in the movie. Didn't right. movie. Like. There is a main character at some point gets shot and killed. I'm not going to say who, when, mm-hmm. where, what, anything. But there is a main character or, or a character that gets shot and killed. I felt nothing. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, he's dead. Yeah, that's 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 it. Or she's dead. Yeah. You know, and whatever. You know? Yeah. It's it's just, it's just, I didn't, I didn't much like it. And I'm sorry, Gina Joe. I'm sure people... Really worked hard in the film, but it didn't hit me in ways that it should have, and that's that's the mother. It's it's yeah. Um, this movie gets the largest. The mother achieves Netflix's largest film opening weekend in twenty twenty three. Um, over uh, the mother amassed over eighty three point seven one million hours of viewership. God damn! What the fuck, dude? Yeah, I mean, man, um. If you're stoned and you just want to relax and watch a movie, that's what this movie is. If you're doing stuff um, around the house, I'm, if you're wa- vacuuming or like cooking yeah. dinner, because if you miss something, it's not really a bad. No, you don't. It's really, not really like the plot is so fucking senseless that you don't really need to know it. Like you, all you need to hear is what Neil said about it, and that's all you really need to know about the film. If you're just doing, some, like I said, I'm not sure what you call it uh, awful. I didn't like it, but I'm pretty critical. I, I think that it's just it's just it's whatever, man. It's fine. <laughs> like like that's all I can say about it. Yeah, it's fine. We tried. Yeah. What well, what's the movie about? I don't know. It was it was it was painful to have to watch it like intently like I do all movies. <laughs> like so that's the problem with it. Um The Mother though. That's, Are um, you the problem with it? Yeah. Uh this is um uh on Netflix so you guys don't wanna uh waste your time doing that, that be my guest. <laughs> but we don't say we didn't warn you. All right, so let's give some quotes and move on. Yeah. You don't know how bad this gets. I know you're in there. Did you think you could hide from me? What are you? What you are to that child is a death sentence. Did you find God or something? No. Civilization is built on the little things. Want me to tell you what he said? Let me translate it. So you're not bar- just Barb. Oh, so you're not just barbed wire around a fence, uh, around a fist, are you? Have you ever thought about doing that, by the way? What? Wrapping your fist in barbed wire so you can punch someone with Yes, it. I've done it before. <laughs> um, you sold your soul to the devil. How do you still look so good? Oh yeah, there's a lot of um things that make look like a car commercial, or they're like just trying to accentuate J Joe's sexiness in this. You know, like yeah, yeah, that's weird. 
It was. It was because she's supposed to be this dark, sinister character, and we get this man, and then we get yeah. like, then they're like, "Ooh, this uh, the most tight fitting thing she could wear." <laughs> We're like, okay, you're not me, and I don't want to be you. Keeping you safe doesn't make me a bitch. Every time I look at you, I'm scared. Just give her this when it's all over. A woman like that, you got to pay attention to what she does, not what she says. Don't hesitate to take your place in this world. You burn down our whole world just for her. That's it. Uh, one of the things that also this movie is missing is any sort of levity or comedy or hard humor. Like, like with a movie this uh, so unquote serious, I think to really elevate something, you need a little bit of humor. You need something. Mm-hmm. And this didn't have it, and but I, was I don't know if it needed humor or what it needed, but it's missing a big piece. Yeah, yeah it's, it, it's, it's missing something. It's, One, I just don't believe J Lo as a cold-hearted assassin. Did you get the TV movie out of this as well? Oh my gosh, <laughs> I did. I didn't want to say that out loud. I, got, I mean, and it, it's on a television service, but Netflix—they want to really push that the act, the idea that they have, you know. Big screen worthy films you can watch from home, and this to me felt like TV movie film, like TV movie, and it's that, yeah, because of that. This was not good. Because All that, right. it's a What's two point eight, two point eight for me. The rating, two point eight, rating, two point eight. So it's above an STD. You're at least going barely, above an STD. Barely, barely. All right. Um, I, I have to, man, I have to give this STD. Dude. Oh, it's, I have what'd to you give this? I, I gotta give this a two point five. Oh, I man. have to like. <laughs> Uh, this is an STD. This is something to do. Um, something to do for sure. To be honest, and, and this is why it hurts me so much. Mm-hmm. I just recently saw you in a movie where you kicked so much ass <laughs> in Hustlers. She's so Hustlers, good. She's so I, good I, I, Hustlers. I, oh, that movie was so great for her. She is a good actress. This is just a bad movie or bad directing or bad direction. Nobody, I don't know if anybody's heart was in this movie. If they were, I'm sorry. I don't know if this was just a paycheck. I don't know what happened here, but something happened. Y'all effed it up, and that's all I have to and say. The, and the thing is, like, uh, I w- so guys, if you don't know, we we uh, rank movies from zero to five. Five is, you know, life changing, zero is we should have cut ourselves while watching it. And anything below 2.5 for us is an STD. There's something to do from our name. And uh, not a whole lot of movies get that honor, but the, yeah, the you know what, Neil? I might give it lower. <laughs> just keep talking about it, man. But all right, all right. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes, man. Let's go. Okay. Uh, what is I guess I RottenTomatoes.com. What is the audience score for the mother? Audience score. The audience score. Forty-two percent. No man, seventy-two percent. There's an audience says too. Holy shit, what does it say? The mother may not deserve Jennifer Lopez, but she still makes this pretty ordinary action movie worth watching. Okay. Now, what is the what is the mother the critic score for the mother? Fifty six. Forty five. Damn, I should have uh, stayed with the forties. <laughs> uh critics is, is the mother's welcome opportunity to see Jennifer Lopez in an action hero mode. Albeit one that's frustratingly content, frustratingly content to go on genre cliches. Like, yeah, I, I saw this. I've seen this movie before. I have in a ton of other movies. And that's the problem. Mother's not good. It's not good, guys. Uh, you you can watch it if you want. Uh, I, I, there, I'm sure there are things you haven't seen out there that are way better than this. Um, you know, and Neil said if you're high. Maybe you'll like it. <laughs> Maybe you'll like it more than I did. I, I really wanted to like it, though. I and really wanted me to. Me and Neil, we don't watch things in NBA the first time because we want to give honest reviews of it. Uh, but Yeah. And uh, this one, I should have been doing bong rips. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> should be like, well, I should have been just doing fucking bong rip after bong rip, <laughs> and maybe then they would have got a higher rating. But uh, um, you know what, at dude? that point, that's all I got. All right, that's the mother you, on Netflix? That, that's your mother. Your mother. Your your mom, <laughs> your mom. I'm doing your mom. Doing your mom. Put, doing your mom. Is my, is my mom watching this? Up, do it. I don't. Nobody's <laughs> watching right now, so it's fine. Everybody <laughs> jumped off. I think it was all because of J Lo. Yeah, it must have been. Here we go. News. Chris, news. This is the movies that don't suck and something new. So I tell Chris stuff 
because he's blind in one eye from that one time that he tried to jerk off and hit the wrong spot. Mm-hmm. What happened? All right, Chris. I'm ready. Let's get the sad stuff out of the way. Okay. We're now on week three. Oh, the registry strike raid. Of the WGA strike. Um, we might get some additives to this. Oh. It might just not be the Writers Guild of them. It also might be SAG might be joining because SAG is now in negotiations and they're not going too well. SAG's negotiations are starting on June 7th, but in order to reach an agreement, they have to reach it before the end of June 30th. If the writer's agreement and the SAG goes on, Chris, next year we might be reviewing old movies. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, like, I, uh, I, uh, I, I know the Deadpool shut down. They were filming Deadpool 3, and uh, he apparently, um, you can't do like lines that I haven't been written in uh-huh. the movie. Like, like, so he, he can't riff like you. And they're, they're all about improv in those yeah, movies. Yeah. yeah and so, so, so you can't do that. Uh, it's, it's shut down, which is fine, man. Like, like I, I hope these writers do what they're asking for. I hope the actors do what they're asking for. Uh, but you know, I, I remember the last time it happened and Conan was on the air. He just did shows where he just went out there and, and danced the whole time. And look, man, Stop being greedy assholes, Mm -hmm. all right? I mean, and this is not just to the people about the writer's strike, but this is, like, literally across all of America. Mm -hmm. Look, guys, if you were just less greedy assholes, this country would run great. Because guess what? Look, me, this is my house. Mm -hmm. This is my place. And between me and my wife, we don't make we don't make over $100,000 here. We don't even come close to that. And guess what? Fucking satisfied and happy as hell. Look at you and I. We're people on, we're on a podcast. Little, like, people don't want the whole pie. People just want a little slice. Yeah. And that's what America is all about. So we're, I'm just going to take that, put that as it is. Let's move on yeah. to some of the greatest news I've heard all week. There's a man, and you don't know him, but I know him, and he's one of my favorite fucking pro wrestlers okay. right now. Yeah. His name is Seth. Freaking Rollins, and yes, that's how he—that's how his name, uh-huh. Seth. Freaking Rollins. He comes out every week in a new suit. I'll just show you some. I'll send you some pics between us, and you'll be like, "Okay, I see. This guy's like the Joker come to life." <laughs> Actually, he came out dressed like uh, Wong King Phoenix Joker on uh, one pay per view. Oh, why am I talking about this guy, Chris? I don't know. Is he doing a movie? He's in a movie. <laughs> he has been. Uh, secretly taken pictures of by somebody on the set of Captain America New World Order. Oh, he's in that. He's in it. Seth Rollins. Yeah, that's cool, man. Seth uh, freaking Rollins. Are you excited for the new Captain America movie? Dude, I'm excited. I I love the whole Captain America history, yeah. all of it. And I, and I really like Anthony. Um, I think, yeah. Mackie is like an awesome, awesome guy. All right. Here you go. Are you ready for this? Of course I am. A movie. Here's the cast. Rebecca Pigeon. Courtney Love. Shia LaBeouf. John Travolta. Vigo Romance Al Pacino. Courtney Love's in this? <laughs> Yeah, dude. This movie is called JFK's Assassination. Is it like, uh, like, uh, is it what I think it is? It is. Uh, it is Dave Matthews. It's a movie that they're going to be filming. Yeah. That literally has that entire cast in it. it about, it's based on the assassination of JFK. I wonder who's going to play Jackie Onassis. A duh, Courtney Love. Really? No. I mean, <laughs> why would you have her? I mean. You don't want to make her look like she's a crack out whore. I mean, <laughs> not the, I'm not saying Courtney Love is no. I'm not saying she's crack. I'm not saying she killed her husband. I'm just saying oh, that man. maybe she held a shotgun. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. She fucked. Yeah, Lady, yeah. She fucked Woody Harrelson in the jacuzzi and the people were slave Flint. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah, dude, that's a good one. Anyway, of course I remember Larry, the, the people were slave Flint. That's literally one of my favorite movies of all time. I didn't know that. 
Really? Okay. Yeah, that is like literally Ed Edward Norton, uh -huh, uh, Woody Harrelson. Oh my God! Yeah, that movie is awesome. Um. Anyway, Jackie Chan is returning to a franchise he hasn't been a part of in a while. Rush Hour. No. Uh oh, is that like the one with Dylan Wilson? Is it that one? No. What is it? Karate Kid. Whoa! Oh, yeah, he was in the one like the last time. Yeah, yeah he was in the remake. Remember yeah, yeah. when? Uh, Jaden Smith. Yeah, Jaden Smith. Yeah, Jade. Jada Smith or Jada Smith. Jaden Smith. Jaden Smith. Yeah. Uh, so he is in talks to return to the Karate Kid, uh, playing the sensei. I never saw that that one with you. He was in. It was all right. It okay. was all right. It yeah. wasn't. I can I can I can It was, I it was an American American kid moves to Asian country. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the of um of Jaden Smith, man. I guess yeah, I don't like him. Yeah, well, that's your thing. <laughs> Uh, Eddie Murphy is in talks to play the inspector from Pink Panther in the new Pink Panther reboot. I just wanted to get back to doing some stand-up. <laughs> That's what I wanted. I know. I miss the old Eddie Murphy Raw. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, Award-winning. Go ahead. Raw does not, is definitely not okay to do today. But no, it's, delirious <laughs> either. Yeah. But there were there's still some genuinely funny parts in it that aren't. It's completely homophobic. Super offensive. Yeah. That aren't super offensive. Yeah. Jennifer Co uh, award winning Jennifer Coolidge and Brian Cox are going to star in a new crime comedy called Riff Raff. I the name of it. Yeah. I like the name of it too. Um, Riff Raff is set as a, com a crime comedy, the latest directorial endeavor from Dito Montello, who previously worked on the drama a Guide to Recognize Your Saints. Um, we start Sia LaBeouf, Shana Channing, and Robert Downey Jr. in 2006. You said this has um, Jennifer Coolidge in it? Yes. She's getting like a sort of like a renaissance because of uh, the White Lotus, you know? Yeah, dude, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. And she deserves every minute of it. Yeah. Um, because she, she seems like, a, again, another actress that just seems like they're a good person. The thing is, like, uh, everyone from uh, my generation and part of yours I know her mostly from uh, Stiff with Stiff with Mom. From yeah, she's the original milk. Yeah, she is the original milk. Yeah, but she's she's good in everything she does, honestly. So Johnny Depp was very surprised to be cast as King of Lou, uh, King Louis the Fifteenth. He goes, "I don't understand why they casted me. I am a hillbilly from Kentucky." He doesn't look like a hillbilly personally. No, he's not. Uh, thank you, Johnny. I love you for saying that. I know you're a humbled guy, but man, man come on, dude. Let's just be honest. You're Johnny fucking. But I heard his wrong. teeth are terrible. That's what I heard. Whatever, dude. He's done a lot of drugs. Whatever. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to lie, and he won't lie to you. I bet you if he's in the same room with you. It, but apparently, I mean, he still hangs out with Marilyn Manson. Uh, I, I mean, uh, come on. Marilyn Manson's not a sober dude, man. All right. I mean, I love Manson. I love Manson's music. I love his anti-authority, you know. But we, I mean, he's, people. but the people are saying he's done some stuff, and I don't know. Who? Manson. Yes, he's done all of it. So he's, like, he's, he's been raping girls in the dungeon like these people were saying? I don't know. Probably. Is Marilyn, <laughs> do, do you see the guy? <laughs> like, yeah, raped by, by playing with a train set by his grandpa when he was a kid. Yeah. Believe me, why there's old porn being splashed on a screen in the basement. Uh, like, literally, guys, I there's sometimes when things come up about people that I'm just like, yeah, makes sense. <laughs> anyway, Johnny Depp got a seven-minute standing ovation at the Cannes for his Cannes Film Festival uh, for the movie. You know, we, uh, you and I, we need to get a press pass to that so we can go to it. <laughs> I, I would go to any film festival if anybody ever allowed me. I want you. I have not been to any film festival ever. It's going to happen. I promise. We're, yeah, sure. Sure. Make sure, sure, it will. Make sure it will. Make sure it happens. Yeah, all right, whatever. Yeah. Hey, if you play the game Dead by Deadlight, uh, Nicolas Cage is going to be added to the multiplayer uh, horror game. So, everybody, you're going to get Nicolas Cage in there to play. That's awesome. Yeah, it is awesome. Uh, that guy whose name I can't say and Juno Temple uh, are both <laughs> added to, <laughs> to Venom 3. Hold on, I'll get up and you keep going. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. This is what I'll do. I'll send it right over to you. Okay. Your, 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 your thing's right here. You you tell me you can pronounce this name. Okay. You pronounce this name and I'll... I'll okay, you ready? There it is. 
Look at that. Can you pronounce that? Uh, hold on, is it on Facebook? Is that what you sent it to? Yeah, it's uh, on your messenger. Jiutil uh, Ezra. Uh, oh, man. Jiutil Ezra. Yeah, exactly. The dude that was opposite of Doctor Strange in the original Doctor Strange. That guy. Jiutil Ezra 4. <laughs> man, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and Gino Temple have now been added to Venom 3, so more reasons to watch Venom 3, I guess. I mean, I love Gino Temple like, even more now because of Ted Lasso. I'm just like so in love with her. I know. Juno Temple's been awesome. Yeah. Uh, and she's awesome. If you ever see interviews with her and Hannah, who plays uh, the boss, yeah, yeah, the, plays the Rebecca, owner of the team. Rebecca, yeah, Rebecca. Yeah, it plays Rebecca. Oh, my God. They, they in real life. Oh, are, they're, they're, they're like the same people? They, they, love, they, <laughs> they love each other. They uh-huh. love each other, and you can tell it. It's awesome. Um, everybody, Russ the movie has, fil- has wrapped filming, and no one else has died. So well, let's be well, happy. Congratulations! About that. <laughs> I when the movie comes out, it'll be like everyone wants to see you because this person, someone died while making it, you know. And it's just, I'm glad that. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Are what's, you re- I don't know what's going yeah, on. I don't. Yeah, that's why I moved fast yeah. past it. Yeah. Anyway, Dave Batista, oh. one of our favorite wrestlers turned actor, if not our favorite. I just want to hang, uh, hang out. You and I to hang out with him for one night and see what he does. Oh, dude, he said, and he seems like such a cool dude. I know. Like such an, he's a, such a, he's got a heart like us, you know, yeah. like where we just, cause we always give and give and give and people just abuse us constantly. I want, like I, 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 I want to hold Shiggy's hand and then take a picture. So it'd be like a child's hand, <laughs> a giant's hand. He's not that big. Okay. He's like, he's like six, four, six, five. He's <laughs> okay. only like five inches taller than me. Okay. Um, um, Dave Batista to star as a dying assassin who puts a hit on himself in the action movie called the killer's game. That sounds pretty cool, actually. I love that idea. Mm-hmm. Um, it is by Rand Roffitt, who did Second Chance. Mm-hmm. Uh, Simon uh, Kenberg, who did X-Men's Days of Future Past. Hey. Okay, yeah, I'm there already. Yeah. Yeah, that's I'm there. I'm there yeah. all day long. It's almost, yeah. The internet is, is saying and screaming who they want to play Lois Lane in the new Superman Legacy movie. Who is it? Miss Maisel herself, Rachel Bronson. I see that. It, and she is she's very happy. She said, I mean, look, take everything you read on the internet with a grain of salt is my first piece of advice, but it would be extraordinary to play Lois Lane. I grew up watching Lois Lane. This is an incredible, talented journalist who's far from a damsel in distress, and I would jump at that chain. You know, DC is just like Marvel when it comes to teasing actors. You know, like for example, I still think that I still think they're gonna have. Uh, what's the guy? The a Quiet Place, Jim. <laughs> they have Jim play uh, the Mister. Uh, you know, Finn, uh, whatever. But yeah, I would be uh, all about her being Lois Lane. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Samuel Jackson's in a new movie where he takes uh, lead roles in gripping death roll drama Last Meals. Uh, Samuel Jackson and Boyd Hallpark will star in Last Meals, a gripping death roll drama exploring unlikely bonds and personal sacrifices. I don't mean, even think Samuel Jackson's in. I'm uh, maybe just perk up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're Samuel Jackson fans, people. <laughs> like, <laughs> All right. So this list of people, it is... Al Pacino, yeah, Al Pacino, Vigo Monstrone, mm-hmm. John Travolta, Shia LaBeouf, Queen Love. Right? No, no, it's the same movie. I, I accidentally <laughs> loaded it twice. That's my fault. Bridgerton star Jonathan Bailey has now joined his uh, the Wicked movie cast. Mm-hmm. So that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, More people, you know. He's from Bridgerton. Everybody knows Bridgerton. <laughs> All right. So I cannot find any info on this. Mm-hmm. But it was reported yesterday. The new Hellboy live action movie has completed filming. We don't know who's in it or anything like that? Not really much information except for um, uh, Brian Taylor's directing. Um, Deadpool star, uh, uh, Deadpool 2 Jack Kesey is playing at, uh, Hellboy. That's all I got. They got no set pictures. I looked for like an hour. I don't know how long I looked, but I looked trying to find more information. 
got nothing. The guy's uh, done. He's done. He's done Crank, all the Crank movies, and Ghost Rider. Yeah, know? yeah, I know who he is. Yeah. I know who the guy playing Hellboy is. But it was just like, what the fuck? What's going on here? Uh, Emma Roberts, if you don't know her, she's uh, famous for the show Scream and American uh, Horror Story, the TV shows. Mm -hmm. uh, is playing a disgraced dating show contestant in a comedy movie called Hot Mess. I love that already. In this movie, Robert <laughs> plays Laurel Mack, a person who implodes in the worst way possible on a widely popular American dating show and must do the ultimate walk of shame back to her hometown. I love where this is going. It's like Sweet Home Alabama. <laughs> like, I'm there. I'm there with you. We'll, we'll watch you, Emma Roberts. I'll make sure we watch you. All right. This is when you know your career is going in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say who it is and the movie concept. I want you to fill in the actor okay. that is missing. Okay. Catherine Heagle. Okay. But, you know, the one that yeah. is basically blacklisted. In yeah, yeah just, just talking shit on writers. It's co starring in a new rom com called That's Amore. Who plays the male lead part? Oh, and I will say, big name, billion dollar franchises. We're talking one of the biggest names in all of Hollywood for the last 40 years. Oh, shit. Is, man, I, I'm trying to think of who would do this. It's a rom-com with the Catherine Eichel, so. Yeah. And, the and Christopher Walken might be in talks to come in as well. But you wouldn't be a love interest, obviously. Um, man, uh, I don't know, man. You have to tell me. John Travolta. What? Really? He's like, he's like a million years old. <laughs> like, like. Right. Okay. Well. Well, uh, Nicholas Holt and Melissa Barre are going to star in a dating show horror movie. I'll watch that right away. All day long. <laughs> yeah. Nicholas Holt. All right. I know why right I so I watched Rainfield again. Yeah, yesterday. Rainfield's great, man. Rainfield's good. Rainfield, right? Yeah, um, Rainfield. I I watched it with my wife mm -hmm. because uh it was available to watch it out there in the world. And so we watched it here at home. And I know why it works so well. Why is because that? it was like warm bodies. Oh, it did feel yeah, I mean the guy yeah. was in it. Yeah. Like now that I got to rewatch it again. It was like warm bodies, like where he's thinking about stuff and questioning everything of his reality, just like he did warm bodies. He's, like, also, he's, for, he's also very good looking. <laughs> I don't know if he's just good looking, but he's like really good at acting. He's a good actor, yeah. I, I mean, like, I think he's the only thing I liked about the token movie was him as a token. <laughs> Um, the Soka sisters are set to direct Tubi's Festival of the Living Dead. Now, if you don't know what this is, are you ready for this? I'm ready. This is actually the, I mean, even though there's been a million movies claiming it, this is George A. Romero's sequel to A Night of the Living Dead. Really? Yes. Yeah, okay. I watched it's it. It's called Festival of the Living Dead. It's set more than 50 years at the events of Night of the Living Dead, which was released in 1968. The zombie attack has been subject of nostalgia in recent years. But, I mean, dude, look, I like zombies. But did, yeah. I, we, we overdid it for so long. I know. Like, like for example, like, uh, walking in, it came out the height of the zombie thing, and everyone's fucking tired of it. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, so... So two people from Daddy's Home. Do you remember Daddy's Home? Yeah, that has uh, Will Ferrell and uh, Mark, you Mark, Mark Wahlberg, right? Yes, Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> um, do you remember Daddy's Homes too? Is it the same? Wait, no, it's it was with uh, John Lithgow, right? And Mark Wahlberg. And oh, who's, and Will who's Ferrell. The, who's the fourth guy? That who's the fourth guy? And was John Lithgow, Will Ferrell, Mark 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 Wahlberg. And, uh, the who was the other father? Oh, Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson <laughs> is to direct Lion Gate's new movie, Flight Risk, featuring Mark Wahlberg. Man, so did you see Hacksaw Ridge? Yes. Yeah, and that, Mel Gibson brought out the fucking blood in that one. Um, <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, uh, way to go, Mel Gibson, to, you know, still be acting, still have a good career. 
I mean, maybe, yeah. Uh, Guardian of the Galaxy Volume 3 set mm-hmm. the new world record for most prosthetics in a movie. I'm glad. I'm really happy of, with that, by the way. I'm glad that they didn't. Oh, by, oh, oh, oh. Not only that, they're over $600 million already. Oh, yeah? Great. It's a great yeah. movie. It's a great movie. All right. Now, I want you to guess how many pieces of prosthetics were used in Guardians of the Galaxy? I'm gonna say six thousand. When when you give me a real answer, I'll, I'll listen to you again. Twenty thousand. You're getting closer. It is twenty two thousand. Okay, right. Twenty two thousand five hundred and sixty were used. You and I are big fans of like practical effects, so I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that. I know. Me too. Hey, one of my favorite. Names to say in comic book movie history is returning to the movie Deadpool 3 is bringing back the one, the only. Can you say the name off the top of your head? No. Negasonic Teenage no. Warhead. Oh, <laughs> and her and Yuki will be returning together as the neck in the next Deadpool 3. I'm looking forward. I mean, Deadpool 3 is, I mean, I loved all, I love both Deadpool, so I'm, I'm just. I'll be there for three. I'll be that dude. This is pretty sad, but uh, Jared Butler's next movie in the Fallen series. Oh, he's doing another uh, one. Okay, Paris <laughs> has fallen. Is going to go straight to the small screen. Uh, it looks like this one is being picked up. Oh, okay. Where is that? You said small screen. Oh, it's going to be a TV series. Mm. Okay, where? It doesn't say where yet. Maybe they haven't shopped it around yet. But it is in the Fallen series. Olympus has fallen. London has fallen. Angel has fallen. I've only All seen the it. above. I've only seen Olympus has fallen. Um, Daisy Radley, Ridley, Daisy uh, Ridley. also known as, as Ray, is going to be starring in a kind of a diehard-like action movie called Cleaner. Is she a cleaner? cleaner comes, yeah, it comes from Martin Campbell, the filmmaker behind the James Bond films, Golden Eye, Casino Royale. Yeah. The movie will be set in London with a radical activist take over the shard during an energy company's annual gala held at the tall skyscraper oh, building. Just like Die Hard. They take 300 hostages. It's Die Hard. Yeah. So, way to go. I love her. She's awesome. Um, Skeleton Crew is a new Star Wars uh, show that's going to be coming out. It's going to be their version of pretty much the Goonies. Okay. Uh The Star Wars universe. Joining them is going to be Joe White. Okay. Do you know who that is? No, tell me. It's like... Did I do that? Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Mr. Steve Urkel (laughs) (laughs) is going to be joining. Uh, In the next... Uh, Mortal Kombat video game. One of the faces that you can download for Johnny Cage is the Jean-Claude Van Damme skin. So you can fight with Jean-Claude Van Damme in the new Mortal Kombat. And last but not least, this one I saved just for you. You ready? I'm ready. They're already filming Battle Geese 2. There's already pictures of the sets and people uh Winona Ryder already dressed like Lydia, all oh that stuff. Oh my god. But guess what? They're still adding to the cast, oh. Chris. And guess who they just added? Who? One of our favorite actors of all fucking time. One of the creepiest but coolest guys at the same time. He can play in any fucking movie and you'll fucking go see it this second. Who? You want to take a guess? No, you tell me. Cause I'm, my head's scrambled today. William Defoe. William Defoe's in this one? Ugh. Beetlejuice 2 now has William Defoe. They're already filming this shit. Like, literally, there's already pictures going on. Man. Like, <laughs> you, like, you, you know how excited I am for this, actually? I'm very excited. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited for this. You got Jenny Ortega. You got Michael Keaton. You got Winona Ryder. Catherine O'Hare. You got, now you got Defoe is in this? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fucking eight. Yeah. And that's the news, Chris. Let's get to this last movie. 
That was the Movie Zone Suck. It's something news. I told Chris a bunch of stuff, a lot of stuff, because there's a lot of stuff out there this week for some apparent reason. Yeah. And now we got to talk this last movie about Ben Affleck. All right, the last movie called Hypnotic. Uh, directed... <laughs> Hold on. Exactly. Hugo got it right. Yeah, Hypnotic, directed by Robert Rodriguez. Uh, you guys know Rodriguez. He directed From Dust Till Dawn, The Faculty, Spy Kids 1, 2, and 3, Once Upon a Time in Mexico, El Mariachi, uh, Planet Terror, Sin City, Sin City 2, Spy Kids 4, Machete, Machete Kills, Matador, Socking Dead, Red 11, Alita Battle Angel, and a couple episodes of television. And uh, did director the episodes of uh, The Book of Boba Fett, and now did Hypnotic. And um, he wrote it too with Max Bornstein. Max Bornstein is uh, written stuff like Godzilla vs. Kong, uh, The Terror, My, Kong Skull Island, which I really liked. Um, okay. And uh, this stars Ben Affleck as Danny Rourke. What? What did you say? Um, also, Elisa Alice Braga as Diane Cruz. Diane Cruz. Let's see. Pancreas and kidneys from the diabetes. Also, J.D. Pardo as Nix. Camila, listen to me. And uh, also, uh, William Fickner as Del Rain. Scorcher today, huh? And this also stars Dale uh, A.K.A. as River, Jeff Ahi as Carl, Jackie Earl Haley as Jeremiah, Zane Holtz as Trout, a uh, bunch of other people. Why don't you go ahead and read the storyline for Hypnotic? A detective investigates a mysterious involving his missing daughter in a secret government program. Now, you text me while you're watching this. And yeah. You're, and you're like, what the fuck? And then you're like, oh, and what the fuck at the end, too? All right. This is okay. I I'll jump into this. Let mm -hmm. me go first. Okay. This movie has a great idea. There is a great premise behind this movie. There is a great thought behind this movie. In fact, um, here we go. Movie fact. Robert Rodriguez written this uh, initial screenplay for Hypnotic back in 2002, calling it one of his favorite stories of all time. Now, I can agree that this story... If done correctly, <laughs> would have fucking blown my mind. Because I'm fucking messaging Chris. Like, I think it was 20 minutes in the film. Yeah, you were there alone the probably, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, there's one other dude, but he was like way I have, I was just, I have this dude, there's no one fucking there. <laughs> like, like yeah. this movie, I didn't know he existed barely. So. Yeah, I didn't even know. I didn't. I didn't see no advertisements for this movie. I didn't know this movie even fucking existed. This movie didn't get advertised to me until after I started looking it up for the shit that I had to do for the podcast. <laughs> All right, now this movie has a great premise, has a great mm -hmm. idea. Yeah, it just did not come together. Uh, so and I am not blaming the acting in this one. Yeah, because the acting in this was actually really good. Everybody played off of each other really well. Um, when the villain came into play, um, William uh, Fechner, Fechner, when he came, yeah, when he came into play, awesome. I felt it. I felt the way it was going. I understood, but some here did not connect rightly. And spoiler alert. And I, I I don't know if this is a spoiler. Whatever. There is a mid credit scene after this movie that just ruins the whole fucking movie. Yeah, it ruins it fucking like why? It's like this movie is not good enough that it's getting a sequel. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Robert Rodriguez. I appreciate that you work hard in everything you've done. Lucha Underground Wrestling, one of my favorite things you've ever done in my life. Anyway, but. This movie just does not make sense. And then when it did make sense, it got to the point where I'm like, you know what? Yeah, there is a little rough at the beginning. Yeah. But then but then when the ball got rolling on what the story actually is, and again, not trying to spoil it, um, because there is a major twist mm -hmm. in this. It's about hypnotic. Um, the best way without ruining it is about people with hypnotic abilities, and that's why it's called hypnotic. I don't know why that's not in the, <laughs> yeah. the, the, the detailing of this fucking movie. But um, 
and it goes down this way. And yeah, this could have been Memento. This could have been like a movie that that it's weird, didn't make sense until it made sense. And then when it made sense, you're like, fucking hey, this makes sense. But right when it did make sense and then everything started going good, I'm like, okay, I get it. Then it just was like, no, no. We take that fuck away. You. Fuck you. Fuck you. So <laughs> the thing about Robert Rodriguez is that whenever I see Robert Rodriguez, Rodriguez movie, I'm thinking – there's me a fair amount of cheese, you know, like when it goes to, you know, and this is like Rod Rodgers, Rod Rodgers not having the cheese, but trying to make a movie. So, cause I would, you told me this Rod Rodgers movie, I wouldn't have known cause he has a style. And it's like he made a movie and he's like, I'm not going to inject any my style into this at all. Are you right, dude? I ain't a wabasabi peep. <laughs> anyway, continue. So, um, I didn't know this was a movie until like uh, literally a minute before I started to sit down and watch no, it. No, I didn't know until it said it on the screen. I didn't know anything about this. I knew Ben Affleck was uh, in a movie. I knew J Lo was in a movie. I was like, it's a perfect and, time. And I to feel do like ben if you would have told me after, I would be like, really? Because it has some of his style in the movie, you know? And, right. But it's at the thin story, which is hey, there's a story in this. It's cool, but it's pretty thin. Um. Oh. And it's, it's, I like, all right, both of these movies that we reviewed this week, for some reason, they didn't work. No, they didn't. All right. The first one, we already talked about that one, uh, Mother, um, but Hypnotic, this one, I don't think it was the acting, because I think the acting was good, but it was just like, I don't know if they tried to overdo it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. But, like, it. that's what I'm going to say. They tried to overdo it. Like, I feel like it was great. It, it I Like, in mid-movie, I mean, at the beginning, I'm just like, okay, this is my thought in the movie. Mm-hmm. And this is when I started messaging you. <laughs> it's like, this is a cheesy, shitty fucking action movie. And Ben Affleck is not worthy of this movie. Yeah. I really feel like Ben Affleck really wanted to work with Robert Rodriguez, mm-hmm. which who doesn't? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's Robert Rodriguez. This is death proof. This is uh sin well, he, city. He this didn't is do, he didn't he, do death proof, but I'm on, I'm going to go on. Whatever, whatever. It's Robert Rodriguez. He's the guy that works with every time Quentin Tarantino t- takes a shit. He's the one to help it, you know, in the next stall next to it. Well, like literally, but uh, I'm going to be honest, man. So, uh, Robert Rodriguez, the last good movie was sin city. Which was twenty two years ago. And oh, you but you didn't see. Um, did you see the Covenant? The, which, oh, that's Guy Ritchie. Never mind. <laughs> Here, give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. Well, you never watched one. You never watch. You don't watch wrestling. I uh, no, I don't. I don't like. Dude, I'm gonna be honest. I don't like. Um, I don't like the Machete movies that that that, that, great, that great to me. I, I love the Machete movies. I know you do. I, I bet you do. I'm not I actually I'm one of the few people who didn't like Planet Terror. Didn't like it. I like Planet Terror. They're... I think Death I think Death Proof is so much better. The Book of Boba Fett? I didn't see the Book of Boba Fett. Um sorry. He's the exact <sighs> He's the executive <laughs> producer, which basically means he did everything. He was director of three of the, three of the episodes for sure. That's what it says here. But did you like Alita? Oh, he, he did her Haley Reinhardt's uh, music video. I got to go see that. Haley Ron, uh, Reinhardt does my favorite rendition of um, the Creep. She oh. used to be in Scott Bradley's postmodern jukebox. Oh. oh, really? Okay. Yeah, she's the one that did it with um, the clown that we went to see. Uh, Puddles. Puddles, yeah, Puddles. Puddles yeah, yeah. She did it. Uh, she did Mad Mad World with Puddles the Clown. And that's one of my favorite renditions. Oh, has a great voice. Any, anyway. Anyway, but going back to Hypnotic. Yeah, something. Oh, was, he did Adelita Battle Angel. Yeah, I don't. I, I I'm fine with Adelita Battle Angel, but that to me that that was the Mandalorian. Okay, when it comes to Adelita Battle Angel, that's what I expect from Robert Rodriguez, and he didn't inject any of that style into Hypnotic what's, whatsoever. It's not no. there. And it, it, the the the, the pro- there is just something missing in this movie, and maybe it is the style. Maybe it is what it is, but. There's a good story. Mm-hmm. There's a really good story here. Mm-hmm. Um, Robert, hand the script over to someone else to do it, bro. <laughs> yeah. I mean, nothing against you and nothing against your family because literally I think your entire family was a part of this. Did I put that as one of the movies? Yeah, 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 yeah. 
I think he did. Um, but yeah, yeah, here it is. Uh, literally, family members worked in the film. His son um, was the composer. His um, recent uh, events. Yep, was also a co-writer and producer. Sid was a special effects. His daughter was storyboards. And his son, Rocket, is editing. All right, guy. <laughs> Look, dude. You have a movie with Ben Affleck. One of the biggest actors ever in the history of Hollywood. You have J.D. Pardo and one of the most, who is one of the main actors and one of the biggest TV shows on TV today, which is saying something because a lot of TV shows on T network TV aren't big anymore. Yeah, yeah. And he's an actual really big one. Yeah. You have this cast of just great people. Heavy hitters. How could you not make this come together correctly? Yeah, something was something was very wrong with this movie, and it. And to me, it's it's the, the script is written weirdly. I think it's it's not as as compact and as good as it could have been. There's something wrong with it. But remember that that weird fucking movie that Christopher Nolan did. You know, um, everything he's ever touched. Um, that weird one, the, the really story? dumb one that was like, uh, is that the reverse time one? Oh, you! Oh, we're talking about tenant. You're talking about tenant. Tenant, yeah. Dude, by the way, I, 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 before you say anything bad, I cannot wait for Oppenheimer. I'm so stoked for Oppenheimer. Man, like, whatever. Yeah, I'm sure you'll watch it. And have a good time. Yeah, we'll watch um, it anyway. We'll, you'll watch it too. Huh? You'll watch it too. We're no, doing, we're doing for no, the no. show. We're I'll doing tell for the you, show. I watched it, and I'll just get some quotes offline. <laughs> but yeah, how shitty I thought it was. Um. Anyway, you like Killian? I'm Murphy. not going to go on. watch a seven hour movie in the movie. You want to see Killian Murphy, right? What? It's Killing Murphy's the lead in that, and you love Killing Murphy. I know! Killing Murphy's awesome! I freaking, I know. I'm sorry that he got involved with Christopher Nolan. Anyway, I, I want I want to try to wrap this up. Oh, anyway. Uh, good movie, just didn't work out. Anyway, let's get some quotes and get the... Uh, okay. Yeah. And get our scores on this. Um, that's where you go, the park, that day. He's got you under his spell. It's so hot, like a furnace. How do you know so much about these hypnotics? Because I am one. Who? He won't stop until he accomplishes what he has to be, been told to do. Be, bet you never get a speeding ticket. Hands up, jackass. Are you in my mind? No, we are old friends. Hey, do you want some homemade Mountain Dew? My own brew, 100% organic. <laughs> what is an organic Mountain Dew? All right, anyway. <laughs> Whatever you're selling, I'm not interested. Don't use my own brain against me. You had 12 runs at this and you haven't found her yet? Well, get ready for number 13. You're the only one who can keep the moral compass pointed in the right direction. Private goddamn property. We love each other so much we know we would find each other again. That's the last one. Yep. All right. Um, what's your score on this one? Oh, man. The story's so good. It just wasn't fucking. It, it wasn't there, bro. And I hate to say this, but man, it has to be like a two point eight. I'm two point five actually. This the, this one. So we're reverse like. You think this is worse than Mother? Yeah, I do. Damn. That mid credit scene ruined fucking the whole, all of the movie. It fucking ruined it. That mid credit scene just fucking. You, you guys see this? Stay your stay around for that. You want the whole fucking thing to be ruined for you. Uh, now I'm on RottenTomatoes.com. What yeah. is what is the audience score for Hypnotic? <laughs> anyway, uh, has to be. I'm gonna give it 45. 62 percent. Okay, what's the thing? They don't have a thing for them. So, now what is the critic score for Hypnotic? Seventy-one. Thirty-eight percent. Yeah. yeah. Critic consensus is. Although hypnotic isn't without glimmers of inspiration, the ultimate effect of this often clunky crime caper 
We'd be feeling rather sleepy. Yeah, I get that. I get that. All right, guys. And that's hypnotic, guys. That is our Benefer episode. Chris's favorite episode of his favorite couple <laughs> of all time. You can find us on Don't Suck That Network, Facebook, Facebook.com, slash News on Podcast. We're at WTMnet.com. Search our podcast there and find us of cool stuff there, too. Go to uh, go to Instagram at uh, MTS Pod. It's, uh, go to fucking, what did I say? Yeah, Twitter at MTS Podcast. Uh, we're also on Patreon, Patreon.com, slash News Don't Suck. We're on Bonfire, such movies don't suck and something to do. And where you find podcasts, you find movies don't suck and something to do. Neil, what do you do for small businesses? If you have a small business, send that information right over to us. Email us, message us, let us know. If you submit us in person, let us know. We'll be more than happy to talk to you and promote you right here to our thousands of listeners, our millions of followers, right here at Movies Don't Suck and Something to Do. Chris, get out of here. All right. That's another episode of Movies Don't Suck and Something to Do. My name's Neil. And I'm Chris. And remember, guys, no matter how hard you try in life, something you made a mistake on 20 years ago can come back and be your wife in 2023. <laughs> Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs>